Greetings, friends, and welcome back to Worship with the Longmeadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Auburn, New Hampshire. I thank you for joining us here today as we worship. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Reverend Ruth Gallat. I'm the pastor of the Longmeadow Congregational Church, and I come to YouTube twice each week. I am here every Sunday with the worship service for the entire church family, and I also come every Wednesday with a special message for the children of our church. Our church is currently worshiping in three different ways. We worship <clears throat> in person in, in our sanctuary every Sunday at 930 on Zoom at 11 o'clock and here on YouTube. When whatever way you join us, we are blessed to have you here. If you are feeling blessed by this time of worship and you would like to support the ongoing ministries of the Longmeadow Church, we would gladly accept any offering that you might offer and you can find an address in the description down below where you can send any offerings. However, your presence is what we most seek, and we are so glad that you are part of our extended church family. Our worship service here online <clears throat> consists of three parts. The first is a prayer, opening ourselves up to the presence of God. The second is the sharing of scripture, and the third is a reflection on that scripture. However, on the first Sunday of each month, we also add in <clears throat> sharing of Holy Communion. And we do this here online as well. Our church practices open communion, meaning that anyone who would like to is welcome to join us in this. We know that our God is bigger than anything that we can do and cannot be harmed by anything we can do. We don't think that anyone's presence can defile the presence of God and that because Jesus invited all in and welcomed all, that we are called to do the same. And so I invite you, therefore, to have ready uh, bread of any kind <clears throat> and cup. It can be with juice, wine, uh, or whatever. It's not the molecular makeup or the ingredients that are important in this, not the physical ingredients, but your presence in your heart and your desire to do this in remembrance of him. And so I invite you, therefore, to have those items available so that we can share this holy meal together at the end of this service. And so now, my friends, I invite you to be with me in a spirit of prayer. Our church um, has been participating in Church World Service Blankets Plus Outreach Program for many years now. And we will be beginning that program this Sunday and continuing into next Sunday, which is Mother's Day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is the particular ministry of our church that we will be raising up in prayer today. In these weeks around Mother's Day each year, we celebrate by participating with churches across the country in the annual Blankets Plus Outreach. We invite you to pray how you can honor your mother by providing warmth and comfort to someone in crisis by donating a blanket in your mother's name. You can speak to anyone on our missions committee or to me. Um, and if you would like to participate and send an offering in any amount, we recommend $5, but it can be in any amount. And if you send it to um, the, the address down below, indicating on the check Blankets Plus, just make the check out to Longmeadow Congregational Church, but in the memo line, write Blankets Plus, we will make sure that your offering goes towards that outreach program. Also, we it has been our custom that we make little felt blankets and we invite people to put the name of their mother or whomever they are donating this um, in honor of. And so if you would like us to include that for you, when you send in the check, just send in a note, say, you know, donating a blanket in memory of and the person's name, and we will make sure that that's included in ours. We also, uh, including prayers for, <coughs> excuse me, prayers for our sibling churches in the New Hampshire Council of Churches. 
And so, my friends, I invite you now to be with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, be with us this day and help us to feel your presence. When we are stressed, overwhelmed, and unsure, help our hearts not to be troubled. If we hear bad news, comfort us, we pray, and remind us of your presence and of our faith. Calm our hearts today as we bring our prayers of gratitude. On this day, we give you thanks for the opportunity to share the warmth of your love through the annual Blankets Plus offering. As a small church, it is easy for us to wonder what impact we could possibly make. But by joining with other churches across the country, some like us, some very different, we become part of something bigger, part of your plan that we may all be one in loving you and in serving your people. We give you thanks for these other churches <clears throat> beside whom we serve, and especially we raise up to you this day our siblings in Christ in the New Hampshire Council of Churches, including this week the Community Congregational Church UCC Greenland, the Greenland United Methodist Church, the Groveton United Methodist Church, Stark United Methodist Church Groveton, St. Christopher's Episcopal Church Hampstead, Hampstead Congregational Church UCC, and the First Baptist Church of Hampton. <clears throat> we give you thanks for the ministry these churches bring to their communities, and we pray that you will bless them, that they may continue to share the good news of your love and your light in the world. <clears throat> the brightness and dazzle of Easter has dimmed our, in our midst, O oh Lord. We have allowed ourselves to slip back into old habits and attitudes. Bring to us again, we pray, your resurrection spirit, that we might know of your abiding love and presence. We want to place our trust in Jesus. We want to be of service to you by serving others, but sometimes our courage and strength waver. And we wonder if we can do the work that you have set before us. It would be very easy for us to turn away. And so we pray that you will turn us around, Lord, as we bring to you the names of those people who are near and dear to us and those far away and unknown, that all of your beloved children in need <clears throat> may feel your presence in your healing mercies and comforting love. We pray for all those who are ill, awaiting test results, or receiving treatment. We pray for all who have died this week and for those who are grieving. Lord, we pray that you will keep us mindful of people who we may neither know or see, who feel broken or feel frightened or feel lost. There are people struggling with challenges in their lives, always of which we have no knowledge. And so this day we raise up to you all the sorrows which if we thought <clears throat> which if we thought we stood alone would overwhelm us and trouble our hearts beyond bearing but we know that you can bring all to you and we trust in your living care for all the prayers we bring for others we know that we too stand in need of the same compassion we need your love. We need your guidance. You are the cornerstone. You are the strength to whom we can turn when our own strength has ebbed. Speak, we pray, that what you would have us here, that it may build us up to be a people of honor, integrity, and compassionate service to others as we raise our hearts to you now in prayer. <clears throat> As we gather this day, O oh Lord, as people who seek your guiding love, open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith that leads to loving service. Create a new people in this place so that your love may surround all who enter here. For we ask these things in Jesus' name as we join together in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Today, my friends, I am reading to you from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. That is John 14, 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Peter, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask, for, you ask me for anything, I will do it. This, my friends, is the Word of God. <clears throat> Seems odd, or at least intriguing, that today's text brings us back to those fear-filled days, the, mo the moments, really, before Jesus' crucifixion, when he is with his disciples. They have shared the meal together. He has washed their feet and called upon them to do the same for each other. Judas has slipped away quietly to betray him, and Jesus has just told Peter that he will deny knowing Jesus three times. All of this can only have increased their anxiety in the intensity of that Passover in Jerusalem. And Jesus says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. I don't know about you, but Nothing causes me more anxiety than someone telling me to calm down. Like Thomas, who asked, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Philip, who asked, Lord, show us the way and we will be satisfied. Literally, call God down so I can have proof. When I'm told to calm myself, it leads to all kinds of anxiety-induced questions to buffer myself with information that I think will protect me. But Jesus assures them that this isn't about where they are going. It is about with whom they will be. Jesus attempts to still their troubled hearts by telling them he is leaving and he will make a place for them where he is going. I enjoy traveling, as many of you know. I just came back from a trip to Norway. And over the years, I have stayed in many different types of accommodations, from high-rise hotels to rustic cabins with inconsistent heat to cozy bed and breakfasts, and once in what I can only call a no-tell motel when I was stranded in Denver. One of the most memorable places I have ever stayed was in Alice Springs, Australia. 
I had journeyed solo for about 24 hours, actually a little bit more, by plane to reach this destination, a town in the middle of the Australian outback, the desert. I got in a taxi and wearily told the driver the name and the address of my motel. When we arrived, though, the place looked deserted. No cars, no lights on, nothing. The driver waited while I went to the door and read the note taped there that said that the motel had been shut down suddenly. I later learned that it was because their electricity had been cut off due to lack of payment. And it recommended, though, another motel. In my seriously jet-lagged state, I was close to panicking at this time, but the kind taxi driver assured me that we would figure something out. He shut off his meter and we drove to the suggested motel and he accompanied me inside to make sure that everything was all right before he departed and if there was a problem, he would just drive me to another one. But I will never forget the words of the desk clerk who when we explained the situation said, no worries, we have a place for you. It was this quirky assemblage of grass-roofed A-frame huts with a kind of Polynesian vibe. Lots of funky coconut and tiki themed things all over the place. But I had a comfortable bed, a television that seemed to carry only endless cricket matches, and the kindest, most laid-back Aussie staff in the world. Every day they not only cleaned my room, but they would leave me personal little notes or, and sometimes small tokens, token gifts like a bottle of mineral water one day with a note telling me that it's important to drink a lot in the desert. Or once a few pieces of local fruit because, quote, they are extra delicious at this time of year. Now, I don't know if it was because of the situation that led me there or because I was a young woman traveling alone or they're just incredibly nice people but these people took such good care of me. The desk staff was also kind in watching out for me as I said a young woman traveling solo making suggestions and often driving or offering to pick me up if I would be getting back late because they didn't want me walking alone in town late at night. Now I know that Australians are known for being friendly and laid back, but I felt so cared for. I truly felt like it had, they had made a place for me, not only in their hotel, but in their hearts as well. We shared meals together. I learned about them and their lives. They learned about me and relationships were built. And I learned more about cricket than I ever really wanted to know. You see, it wasn't about where I ended up staying. It was about with whom I was staying. It wasn't about renting a room. It was about abiding with a group of people. In today's text, the word abide, meno in Greek, is used by Jesus in his line, in my father's house there are many dwelling places, many abiding places. Abiding in Christ is not just a feeling or a belief, but something we do. It means to remain or to stay, and it entails far more than the idea of a belief in the Savior but rather a continued relationship with the Savior. Gail Landis explains it like this. I think this is the best, I think this is, excuse me, I think this is part of what Jesus means when he tells them that the only way to the Father is through him. The way home is not about going to a place. It's about the relationships that make that place home. Jesus is going to prepare their place where, <clears throat> wherever that may be and whenever they will need it because he already loves them. You see, my friends, this relationship building is what the Gospel of John is all about. Throughout the Gospel, Jesus goes out of his way to be known 
to be understood so that they may be in relationship. The famous I am statements that are iconic to this gospel, like in today's I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me, point to the ways, the many different ways that the disciples can relate to Jesus, can be in relationship with Jesus. He speaks of the connections that they share and the difference this will make in their lives. Landis continued, not allowing a troubled heart need not be seen as a promise of a worry-free or fear-free life. If we read verse 1 that way, it seems to promise too much. But it does say something about the kinds of things that Jesus thinks might trouble them. He wants them to know that the only thing that should trouble their hearts is separation from him. And his words about preparing a place for them should take care of that. Jesus promises that they too will have the ability to share this relationship with others. Part of their job as disciples will be to stay in relationship so that they can be place preparers for future disciples. My friends, that dwelling place, that abiding place, can be found anywhere. A high-rise hotel, a cozy bed and breakfast, a tiki-themed A-frame hut in the middle of the Australian desert. Anywhere that relationships are formed. And Jesus has prepared such a place for you who love him. A place where relationship with him makes such a place, wherever it is, an abiding heaven. Thanks be to God. And so now, my friends, I invite you to take your bread and cup and join with me as we share this meal together in remembrance of him. In this season of resurrection and new life, as we contemplate these days marking the beginning of the church's expansion into the world, may we too be ready and eager for the changes and surprises God has in store for our life together. As today's church, let us come together in joy and celebration of the resurrection. Let us come together in new life. Come, for all things are now ready, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to this table. Hear now the story of Christ's table. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who walks with us on all the roads of life, and who's, who is known to us in the breaking of the bread. After the crucifixion, one day two friends walked together on the road to Emmaus and talked with each other about all that they had seen and heard of what had happened in Jerusalem to the man named Jesus of Nazareth. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came to them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. They told him with grief about the death of their Messiah, but he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart! Was it not necessary for the, that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Will you join with me in prayer? As the friends came to the village, they invited Jesus to stay with them. And when he was with them at table, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And when we pour the cup of our salvation and share it between us, our eyes are opened, and we recognize Christ's presence among us, between us, and within each of us gathered here. What we do here is celebrate the life that Jesus shared with his community throughout the centuries and shares now with us, made one with Christ and thus one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves a single, holy, living sacrifice. We offer you praise, dear God, and hearts lifted high, for in the communion of your love, Christ comes to us and we come close to Christ. Blessed 
Blessed Savior, breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and cup. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And so now, my friends, I invite you to take and eat and be filled with the new life that Christ brings. And now, my friends, take and drink, remembering the promise of new life sealed with his blood. And now, my friends, will you join with me as we give thanks for this meal we have shared. God of new life, with joy we give thanks for this bread and cup. With all your children around the world, we rejoice in your resurrection and the strength, love, and peace Jesus' Spirit brings. Unite your church throughout the world in continuing Christ's ministry of love and servanthood, that your name may be praised in all the earth. All this we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, I thank you for joining me here this day. It is such a blessing to be able to reach out to you and to share with you this good news. I hope that you have a wonderful week wherever you are, and I hope that you will join us again next week as we come and continue to hear the good news and to share the good news. Until we meet again, my friends, go in peace and return in joy. Thanks for joining me here. Goodbye.